Let's talk about the pony start motor on your John Deere tractor. John Deere diesel tractors had a smaller gas engine that would start first that would then get the big diesel motor running. And there's lots of problems with the pony motor. Your pony motor may just need a tune-up. It might need the carburetor cleaned and new spark plugs. If you feel that that's the problem on your tractor, we have a separate tutorial which covers the tune-up going through the carburetor. In this video, we'll talk about electrical issues on the pony motors. You can see that this tractor has burnt up coils. It's probably the result of somebody leaving the switch on the pony motor. When the tractor, when the diesel motor starts, you want to turn off the pony motor, so you turn the gas off, and it's easy to forget to turn the switch off, which would damage the coils on the tractor. So I will show you how to either replace only the coil, if that's a step that you want to do, or both of the coils, or you can replace the whole entire distributor and install it in time on your tractor. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do both of those things. I'll also talk about the points and the condenser and troubleshooting. So follow along and you'll be able to make the repairs to your tractor. To troubleshoot your tractor, you can hook up a spark analyzer like I have here. Then with the tractor in neutral, you can press the starter button and see if there's any spark. You can see just a really, really faint spark showing on my tractor. This is a sign that we need to do some work here in, with the coils. Additionally, you could inspect your coils. Sometimes there will be a tar-like substance that will melt out of the sides of the coils. That would be a sign that they've been damaged and would need to be replaced. Also, while you're looking here, you can make sure that your points are opening and closing when you press that starter button, which we saw was happening. And uh, your condensers are right here, which will put some fresh condensers in. One more test that you could do is you could take the wires from your coil off of the, off of the condenser here and off back here and hook them up to an ohm meter. You should be reading 0.8 ohms across the coil. If yours is any less, that would be yet an additional sign that your coils need to be replaced. Before you start to take apart your distributor, make sure to disconnect the ground cable on your battery so that there aren't any accidents as you're working here. And then you can take these five screws off of the bottom. I've already got the other four out, so this is the last one. And then this W-shaped bar will come out with it. You can see that I also have my wires up here on the condenser removed, or just disconnected. They're still laying there. Then this will come loose and the spark plug wires will come with me and it can be disconnected there to free up your coils and then we'll take them out, these off by the spark plugs. I labeled my spark plug wires before I took this unit off of the tractor and then you can see on the paper I wrote one, two, three, four so that I could match my order for the wires. Then I broke off these uh, old coils. You can see that they came off in many pieces and it was really difficult to get that core off of the bar. We reused the bar so you have to get all the remains of that old coil off of there. I used a puller, you can use a hammer. You aren't gonna reuse these so you can break them. Uh, you can also use a cutter if you have to. And once the coils are off, then you can just shine this up so that your new coils will slide onto the bar easily. Your new coils will install with the wires towards the inside, and you can also see that the, they do have this tab on the top to help hold it in there, and that is gonna go towards the top when we slide this on. When you put the coils onto the bar, do not use a hammer on the coils themselves. You can use a hammer on the end of the metal bar, but not on the coil. And also make sure that you press the coils on all the way so that you can uh, expose this hole here on the end so that you can reattach it. Now slide this over. It slides kind of hard. Okay, then I'm just gonna try to tap it on this end. And we'll keep going all the way till that's through. To put new spark plug wires on, you'll want to clip off the very end if you're putting a new style coil on your tractor like we are. If for any reason you were only re going to replace the spark plug wires and you had the old original style, then you would want to leave that adapter on. You can see that there's an adapter on these old wires. But we have new coils, so we're clipping that off. 
Now we can, you can see that I have these wires facing up towards the, the top as I look at it, and this is number one and two. I put the two shorter spark plug wires here, and the two longer will be here on the bottom at three and four. This is a waste spark system, so there isn't a top and bottom that you need to be overly concerned about. I'm gonna turn this over and I have my wire ready to go. I'm just gonna put a little bit of silicone on the very tip here. Notice that I'm putting it out here on the um, black rubber. I'm not putting it inside on the end. I don't wanna get it on the electrode. Then you can drop this down in there. There's a pin that you have to clip that onto or get that to go around. You can use a pair of pliers and really push that in there good. Make sure that's really made a good connection there and then you can put all your wires on in the same fashion. We have our coils here onto the tractor. You can see that this bar screws in uh, on each side. Then you also will want to put this um, magnetizer, this W down at the bottom here. This is just places on, and you wanna be sure that you get it behind that wire on the bottom so that you aren't pinching that at all. And then those uh, three screws will hold that in just going to get one started here to hold it. Okay. Then we have um, the wires up here. These ones that are, just missed the mark. The ones that are brass ended will go to the condensers. And the ones that have the spade will hook up right here. You can loosen up the nut on the outside of the case and then place them in there. You can uh, bend them in slightly so that they aren't going to short out if they touch the the back plate or the outside case when you put that on. I'm gonna show you here how to put the condenser on. You can replace that. This is a replacement part available from Steiner Tractor Parts. There's just one screw out here on the edge. You can replace both of your condensers just like you wanna replace both of your coils. If you made it this far, might as well do the complete change. There's our old condenser and our new one will go in in the same manner. To replace the points, you want to make the replacement when they are on high lobe. You can see here that the point gap is open and you will want to make sure that yours are in the, that same position when you replace each of your points. So you can take your old points out and we'll replace them. Oops, good thing we didn't need that, it's gone now. You wanna put it in in the same way that it came in, Put it in the same way it came out. These tabs will be down towards the bottom. So you can just slide that in there. It might slide easier with my fingers. There you go. You can see that that's in there. And then we have new points. The spring goes up towards the top and you'll use the same screw that you took out. You don't get a replacement screw with your new points. So we'll set that in there. And once you get the screw set, you can screw it in there don't tighten it all the way because that is how you will set the gap properly. The manual says that this should be 20 thousandths. Let me reach my screwdriver here. So when you get this tight, you'll want to check the gap right there. I have a gauge for the 20 thousandths, so I'm going to set that in there and see where we're at. Mm, looks like I need to loosen up a little bit and move that down. Okay. I'm gonna tighten it back up in that position. Of course, when I tighten, it moves up a little bit. Let's try that. That actually looks pretty good. I can slide in there and move that good. So we'll leave that here. I'm gonna to try to tighten it up in the same position. Once it's tight, it's always good to just double check, make sure that that didn't move at all. So that feels good to me. So our points are on. We'll replace the condenser and reattach the wire here as well as this wire there. I have my spark analyzer hooked up here as well as my other wires connected, both of my points replaced. So now we're gonna see what the spark looks like. You can see a huge improvement there. You can see how much better that looks from where we started. This distributor rebuild is now complete. Remember to reuse your rubber grommets from the old one. You can put the cover back on and that would be sufficient for a distributor rebuild if that was what you were intending to do. 
However, if a distributor rebuild seems more complex than what you want to get into, Steiner does offer this complete distributor that is ready to just bolt on to the tractor. And this would be another option for you. We'll walk you through the steps to do this. If you elect to go with this complete distributor, you will need to retime the engine. If you just rebuild the existing distributor, you don't need to make any modifications to the timing. There are four screws which will remove the, that hold the distributor on. That's my last screw to come out. We can take our spark plug wires off and also take this wire out for power. Remember, we still have the ground battery cable removed underneath the seat up there. And then this distributor will come off like so. When you're ready to set the distributor, you should come around to the other side of the tractor near the flywheel and take this inspection cover off. When you take the cover off, you'll notice that there's this V or arrow mark up here at the top. And that needs to match up with a mark that is on the ring gear. The ring gear will say a couple different things. You will see that it says TDC number one, which stands for top dead center, and that's not the correct position. Instead, keep spinning it around. You can use a screwdriver or a small pry bar and gently move that ring gear around until you see this mark, spark number one. You'll see that arrow. That arrow needs to match the V at the top of the cover here. When that's in line, you're ready to get it in correct time. To install the new distributor, you need to take the cover off, just those two screws at the top and bottom, and then you can set this onto the tractor. You can see that it just slides over here and slide it in there gently. There's no reason to um, force it, as there are some uh, gentle points here by the point, gentle spots by the points. So you can just rest that on there like so. Then you can line up your screws and get those started in there. Put all four in and you can reuse your screws from uh, the old one. So we got that. Put the other screws in. Your spark plug wires will feed back through here. Notice that there are short and longer wires. Your shorter wires are up here in the front and your longer wires are in the back at uh, cylinders three and four. When you put your distributor on, don't tighten up all the screws all the way. Leave them loose enough so that you can turn it like so. So I turn my distributor clockwise, then I will turn the key on and I'm watching for the spark here. When it sparks, that will be when I will tighten it up and our distributor will be in perfect time. Now this distributor does not come with the points set because they will move during shipping. So you need to reset your points to be 20 thousandths. This distributor is opposite of what you would think a regular distributor would be. The points are closed on high lobe and they're open on low lobe. That's opposite of what you would normally think. So you have to change your thinking in order to set these points the right way. So at 20 thousandths, you will set that when it is at low lobe, not high lobe. So you can set your points both sides or both sets of points, and then you would be ready to make that timing adjustment. So let's turn the switch on. Oh, hold on. First, I need to turn this all the way. Okay, now turn the switch, and I'm going to watch here as I move this back for that spark. Oop, there it was. Let me do that again. I'm going to turn back, and I'm going slow so I can see the spark. There you go. Okay, so that's right where the spark is. When you're Seeing that spark, that's when you can tighten up all four of those screws and you will be in perfect time. You can see that I have my distributor cap back on, so now we're ready to start the engine up in time. Very nice. You can see that our pony motor is running there and it will get that diesel 
engine running in the tractor. I hope that these steps were helpful to you and you'll be able to determine if you want to rebuild your distributor or if you want to just put a brand new distributor on the tractor. Remember we do have another tutorial which covers the carburetor and a tune-up which you can watch if you need that help for your motor as well. You can watch those tutorials at steinertractor.tv.